Senator Wu. Honourable colleagues, this chamber is expressing yet again our shock and sorrow at another instance of horrific racism in our country. Even calling it horrific is an understatement because what happened in London, Ontario on Sunday was a brutal and seemingly deliberate murder of four Canadians for what appears to be no reason other than the fact that they were Muslims. Salman Afzal and his wife, Madiha Salman, were killed along with their 15-year-old daughter, Yumna Salman, and Mr. Afzal's 74-year-old mother. Their nine-year-old son, Fayez, is in serious condition and will likely recover, but his life has been forever changed. Even as I stand before you to condemn this blatant act of hate, I'm wondering how many more times we must replay this depressing tune before we can put an end to violence against minority groups. The answer, my friends, is not blowing in the wind. It is staring us in the face. Racism and hate are always founded on false narratives and half-truths, and they are often propagated, not necessarily by out-and-out -out racists, but by establishment sources, such as mainstream media, academics, and the political class. In the, case, in the case of Islamophobia, it starts with the denial by many that there even is such a thing. And yet, we have seen a rise in anti-Islam sentiment since the advent of COVID-19. In Edmonton, six weeks into the lockdown, a man sat in his vehicle outside the oldest mosque in North America, Al-Rashid, running what he called a Ramadan bombathon which he broadcast on social media. A few months later, a Quebec man had charges brought against him in connection with hundreds of online posts he made calling for the deaths of all Muslims. Mosques have been increasingly vandalized as a means of spreading fear. The Muslim Association of Canada's Masjid Toronto has seen six major incidents at both of its locations since the start of the pandemic. Al Rashid Mosque in Edmonton was targeted with neo-Nazi graffiti and four men were accused of public urination at the Islamic Society of Markham. Is it any wonder, therefore, that a family of Muslims out for an evening walk in London, Ontario would be mowed down because of who they are? If we happened to be bystanders at that hit and run, we would no doubt report the incident to the police. Well, we are bystanders to persistent racist innuendo against Muslims and other minority groups in our country. It is well and good to call out these slurs in the echo chamber of our upper house, but we should be calling them out everywhere. Assalamu alaikum.